Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Asyhadu la ilaha illallah wa asyhadu anna Muhammadar Rasulullah Muhammadar Rasulullah Asyhadu an la ilaha illallah Asyhadu an la ilaha illallah Asyhadu anna Muhammadar Rasulullah Asyhadu anna Muhammadar Rasulullah Charity that we give at the end of Ramadan. 
Now, most of us now, when we uh, pay or submit, I was a copy fifth of them, most of us nowadays, we do it in the form of cash. But back then, it was done in the form of food. I might have to change the battery. Just bring it I know someone's kind of fishy. Oh, I That's why I looked at it. was in the form of foodstuffs. And so they would have a place where they kept all of the food items and forms of charity that the people gave. And so the Prophet Sallallahu he was um, placed Abu Huraira in charge of watching. He was a security guard. And so one night while he was on guard, he found someone rummaging through trying to steal the food. And so Abu Huraira caught him, said, I'm going to turn you over to the messenger of Allah. And the man, he copped a plea. He said, oh man, please don't turn me in, man. You know, I'm poor, I have a lot of children, I have a lot of dependents. Please let me go. And so Abu Huraira felt pity for him, he felt sorry for him, and he let him go. The next day, the Prophet Wasallam came to Abu Huraira and said, what happened with your prisoner last night? He knew about it. And uh, Abu Huraira told him the story. Prophet Sallallahu said, he lied to you. He'll be back tomorrow. The second day came. Same exact thing happened. Same exact story. Abu Huraira, the following day, met with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked him, what happened to your prisoner? Abu Huraira told him the same story. He said, he lied to you. He'll be back again tomorrow. The third night, same thing happened. Abu Huraira called him. I'm going to turn you into the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, oh man, please don't turn me in. Listen, how about I teach you something that will be of great benefit uh, to you, then you let me go. But please don't turn me in. Abu Huraira said, all right, what you got to tell me? He said, if you recite Ayatul Qudasi, this is Surah Baqarah, chapter Baqarah, entitled The Cow, the second chapter of the Quran, verse number 255, that verse is called Ayatul Qudasi. If you recite this at night, before you go to sleep, Allah will send to you a guardian to protect you at night. And no shaitan, no devil, will be able to harm you at night. So Abu Huraira let the man go. The next day, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came to Abu Huraira and said, what happened to your prisoner? Abu Huraira told him the story. And this is what this clip bar is based on, the words of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He says, Sadaqa wa huwa kadubun dalika shaitanu. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, He told you the truth. Even though he is a liar, that was a shaitan, a devil. Well, alhamdulillah, he replied.
Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, wa aqtulu sunak wa tamu taslim, ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa jma'in, wa radiyallahu ta'ala ala sadidu tabi'in wa ulama'i al-amaleen, wa akhimatu al-arabatu al-mujtahideen wa muqalidihan ila yawmiddin amma ba'ad. Alhamdulillah, I'm pretty sure most of you have heard that hadith before. The hadith, you can find in Sahih al-Bukhari, and it's in, if you're reading the English, broken up into nine volumes, it's volume number six, and then the Fadila of the Qur'an. And it's under the chapter of the merits of Surah Baqarah. And you can find a narration of that hadith. And obviously it was narrated by Abu Huraira. One thing that I want to, one lesson I want to abstract, uh, uh, abstract, a bit from this hadith is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said about himself in another hadith that you can also find in Sahih Bukhari with to be Jawab al Qalb. He said, I have been sent with comprehensive words. Meaning when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam speaks, he says what he means and he means what he says. Even though his words Many times can be understood on many different levels, but his speech is extremely exact and precise because he imitates the speech of Allah, the Quran. <coughs> and when you read this narration, one of the first lessons that I got from it, especially if you read the hadith yourself, you will see that Abu Huraira expressed the fact that he knew that the man would come again after that first encounter. Why did he know with, with certainty? He knew because the Prophet told him that he would come. And this is the faith, the yaqeen, the certainty that the companions of the Prophet had in him. Many times we forget that in order to become Muslim, you have to make two statements, not one. You have to say, La ilaha illallah and Muhammad al-Rasulullah. You have to bear witness to both. And sometimes a lot of us are lacking or our belief is not, is, is deficient when it comes to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, even though Allah as a wajah, numerous times, over and over and over again in the Qur'an, in many different ways, tells us that we have to adhere to, follow, obey the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, or that his speech is not regular speech. His speech is revelation, as Allah says in the Qur'an, in Surah 53, for, uh, chapter entitled The Star. He does not speak from his own desire. His speech is revelation being revealed. So Abu Huraira had complete trust in the words of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Another point that we should play, pay close attention to. Many times when I see this hadith translated or I see people talk about this hadith They say, oh no, Shintar met Abu Huraira. The hadith doesn't say as Shintar. Like when we do isti'ad, when we say a'udhu billah, a'udhu billahi min as Shintar al I seek refuge with Allah from as Shintar, the devil, chief devil, the head. As Shaitan, the curse. The hadith doesn't say as Shaitan. Dalika as Shaitan. The hadith says Dalika as Shaitan. That was a devil. And we know from Surah Al Baqarah that devils can come in jinn form as well as human form. What's a jinn? A jinn is a creation of Allah the same way, similar to the way human beings are. 
Like human beings, we have free will. We can do good, we can do bad. Jinn are just like us. They can do good, they can do bad. We were created from earth. Jinn were created from smokeless fire. What we know about Jinn, in this life they can see us, we can't see them. We know from Hadith that in the next life, we'll be able to see them, they won't be able to see us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah chapter 14, verse number, verse number 14 of Surah Baqarah, about the hypocrites, وَإِذَا لَقُوا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا قَالُوا آمَنَّا وَإِذَا خَلَوْا إِلَى شَيَاطِينِهِمْ قَالُوا إِنَّا مَعَاكُمْ إِنَّمَا نَحْنُ مُسْتَحْزِيُونَ When they are with the believers, meaning the hypocrites, the hypocrites are those who in their heart they know they're not Muslim, but they pretend to be Muslim outwardly. We're not talking about people who have signs of hypocrisy. All of us have signs of hypocrisy. We pray that Allah will remove it from us. But to my full-grown hypocrites, in their heart, they know they're not Muslim. Says when they are with the believers, they say, we believe. But when they, in the when they when they are with their devils, Allah uses the plural of shaitan, shayateen. When they are with their devils, they say, we were only with you. We were with you. We were just praying. And so, so this is one of the many proofs in the Quran that a devil could be a human being as well as a jinn. So we have many human devils walking around here. They are doing the devil's work. And so the hadith says, Sadaqaka, wa huwa kadubun dhalaka shaitanu. He told you the truth, even though he is a liar. That was a shaitan. Now before we conclude, look at this. He told you the truth. Even though he is a liar, he told you the truth. Even though he is a liar, one of the things that we should learn from this is that an exception does not invalidate the norm or the rule. If someone normally lies to you and he tells this guy over here the truth, that doesn't mean that he's a truthful person. His normal state is that of a liar. Just because he told you or him or her the truth on one occasion, that doesn't mean that, oh man, you can trust him now. Hey, man, he told me the truth. They checked out. And let me back up a little bit. The only reason why we know that what he said was the truth is not because Abu Huraira did some logical deduction. He analyzed it. He figured it out. One plus one equals two. No. The messenger of Allah, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said he spoke the truth. The point being is that everything we know or everything we perceive, we have to measure it against what we know from Revelation. We have to measure it against what we know from the Quran. We have to measure it against what we know from the Sunnah or the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He spoke the truth even though he was a liar. A lot of us don't really understand that. Sometimes, and usually, the best liars the reason why their lies are so good and it's so believable is because there's aspects of truth in the lie. Maybe what he's saying is true, but he remixed the whole context. Maybe what he's saying 
verbatim is true, but the application is wrong. I'll give you an example of this, and you can find it in Sahih Muslim, in the, in the book of Zakat, under the subsection of the Khawarij. You know the Khawarij, the first deviant group to come out of Islam. They were, a group of them were marching, and they were using as a slogan an ayat of the Quran. There is no judgment except the judgment of Allah. That's truth, it's from the Quran. Ali heard them saying that. May Allah be pleased with them. He said, Kalimatul Haq, why you read will be Habatim. The words you're speaking are true, but what you intend by it is falsehood. And a lot of us don't understand the reality. Sometimes there could be some truth in the situation or some truth in the person. But the intention behind it, the way they narrate the story to you is completely wrong. It's, it's completely out of context. He spiced it up a little bit. Like, for example, when you watch movies, and these movies are talking about something that happened really in history, something that really took place in history. And you gotta stop getting your history from movies. Because they always spice it up. Even if they say, even, that's why they have a disclaimer in the beginning or the end. It's based on true events. Some fictional characters, some places, people, or whatever is fiction, fictionalized for dramatic purposes or however they phrase it. Because yes, this may have happened really in history, but they added a person in there that didn't exist. Or in some movies they take three or four or five personalities and squish them all up into one person. Or they just completely add a whole they, they have a real historical figure, and they have a whole, for example, a whole narrative. The movie is based on the falsehood, and the truth is sprinkled around the lie. And so you're watching the movie, and the main antagonist or the protagonist is a complete fictionalization. And a, and a little incidental, that's the truth. And I can think of many movies that, you know, film you know, uh, exemplify this, but I won't mention them here. And so you watch the thing, and you're like, oh man, this really happened, man. Yeah, they said it's based on a true story, but the part you're focusing on didn't happen. The details that you missed when you got to go get the popcorn, that's what really happened. So the exception never invalidates or supersedes or takes precedence over or he nullifies the rule or the norm. And some people will swear by the exception. Man, this person, he told me the truth one time. I got a lot of benefit from the truth. Do you, do any of y'all, y'all can't answer this, Juma Cooper, do any of y'all, do y'all walk around, because I'm sure most of you knew this hadith. Man, I don't know why anybody got a problem with Shaitan, man. We wouldn't have known the, the, the merits of reciting Ayat of Kursi if it wasn't for Shaitan. Y'all need to stop talking about Shaitan, man. Shaitan ain't all bad, man. We don't do that. Why? Because it's obvious. But there's some other, like, if you use your logic, we do the exact same thing with other things. I'll give you an example. <coughs> You know, many people in the Muslim community, they were introduced to Islam by Zidat, fornication and adultery. Many sisters, they had boyfriends that they were sleeping with, and they were Muslim. Sister wasn't Muslim at the time. And so that piqued the curiosity. Hey, what's this? They intimate, and he's taking his long shower, and he's prostrating, and bowing and down, what, what you doing? Yeah. And sometimes, you yeah, need to move up and run in the space, Sean. And sometimes, that sets off a chain of events 
to lead that sister to become a Muslim. Do you hear sisters saying, you know what? We need to stop talking bad about fornication and adultery. It ain't all bad. If it wasn't for my boyfriend or this say that, you know, I wouldn't have become I wouldn't become Muslim. You know, we should all commit say that. Maybe we have some more Muslims around. You don't hear Muslims saying that. That's outrageous. I know of some people who were introduced to Islam because they were running in the streets with drug dealers. I'm serious, they're Muslim drug dealers. <laughs> and some places are notorious for, you know, during Ramadan, listen man, I ain't got no more. See me after my bread. I ain't selling no drugs, I'm fasting, man. It's Ramadan, man. See me after Iftar. Then I then I'll serve you. Who are you like, yo, what's what's Robert Iftar? Nah, he Muslim, man. You know, he, you know. He, he don't do that during Ramadan, or he only do it at night. Or what's Muslim? If you learn about it, it become Muslim. Do you see the brother saying, listen, man, drug dealing is good. I took Shahada because my man, my plug was a drug dealer. And he would only serve me after Ramadan or maybe at night. You see, we don't think like that. But when it's convenient, we think like that. When someone or situation is evil or foul, we'll swear by that thing. We know that they're liars. But because you made money with him one time, or because he got some benefit, you got some beneficial information from, from them one time, then you swear by them and you defend them, and you roll with them, even though their normal state is that of a liar. You have to look at the whole thing. It's a package deal. It's not just your little one vision of it. It's the whole. A lot of times we make the mistake of defending evil people because you got some benefit from that evil person one time. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, uh, he said, I have not been sent except to perfect good character. We must have good character. That's the objective of a lot of what we're doing. If you have bad character and you have all the knowledge, that what your knowledge hasn't benefited you. Your knowledge will be used against you. The knowledge you have, you will be reciting and using it as a proof against yourself. Because we know the Quran will be for us or against us. So one thing that this hadith teaches us, that just because that devil told Abu Hurairah the truth, that one time, that doesn't make him a truthful person. It doesn't even make him a good person. He's still a liar and he's still a devil. May Allah make us think more like the Quran. May Allah have us, uh, our thinking and our mindset and our mentality shaped and molded by the Messenger of Allah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. ربنا تينا في الدنيا حسنا وفي الآخرة حسنا وكينا ذا بنا. اللهم تسلم وامي كسر عن جبرتي.